What is it that you hope to gain by obtaining as much money as possible? Is it simply to avoid the prospect of poverty? Do you desire new luxury cars or high-end designer fashion because society has told you they bring happiness? Is it to gain social status amongst so-called important people? What is your true motivation? Most people in this world are living their lives to attain as much money as possible, but have you ever considered the cost of gaining this wealth? While it is true that money can bring happiness, it is only true to a degree. Princeton University researchers found that people's happiness increases up to the income level of about 75000 per year. After that point, there is no correlation between money and happiness. A millionaire is just as likely to be as happy or as miserable as someone who makes 75000 So there are many more important factors at play, but what are these factors? Join me as we explore the views on this subject from one of the greatest philosophers of all time, Seneca. Many people are motivated by a fear of poverty. Seneca, a Stoic philosopher who lived in Rome about 2,000 years ago, had a unique insight into this dilemma. The following content is about a letter that Seneca wrote to his best friend Lucilius. He noticed that Lucilius was putting off his philosophical studies in a fear-driven pursuit of obtaining wealth to avoid poverty. In this video, I will be paraphrasing a good amount in an effort to make this more clear as the translation of a text from 2,000 years ago is not clear at times. Seneca pointed out how the pursuit of riches has prevented many people from attaining wisdom. He proposed that perhaps poverty was more beneficial because it is unburdened and free from care. He points out that when a fire breaks out, the poor man seeks only a way of escape and he doesn't ask what material possessions he can save. The poor man owns no slaves and thus doesn't have to go through the work of uh, attaining food for them from distant lands in order to feed them. Remember, slavery was common back then in Rome. The poor only have to worry about their most pressing needs in the moment, and Seneca points out how easily nature provides for all. Throughout Seneca's letters to his best friend Lucilius, he repeats the need for us not to fear poverty. He actually tells people to temporarily practice poverty so that they will lose their fear of it. In fact, Socrates and Seneca both used to walk barefoot to do just that. There is a modern parallel that confirms what Seneca spoke of. There are many programs in place to help homeless people get off the streets. They offer them apartments in advance as long as they are willing to work. Journalists have interviewed homeless people in the USA, and many of them reply with an answer similar to what Seneca spoke of thousands of years ago. Many of them say they are getting everything they need already, so why would they want to work for it? If you wish to have leisure for your mind, either be a poor man or resemble a poor man. Study of philosophy cannot be helpful unless you take pains to live simply, and living simply is voluntary poverty. Seneca. He then goes on to tell his friend Lucilius to stop postponing the study of philosophy until he attains a certain level of wealth. The attainment of knowledge and wisdom through philosophy should be secured first, and the pursuit of wealth should come second. Think about all these beautiful, rich, and successful people who commit suicide. Unfortunately, a former Miss USA winner recently did just that. When successful people commit suicide, it is a glaring signal that society is overlooking critical aspects of the factors that contribute to our mental health. In my opinion, the lack of philosophy and mindfulness classes for children in our school systems is a major contributing factor to mental suffering later in life. Depression and anxiety is affecting many hundreds of millions worldwide. So the pursuit of knowledge and wisdom should be primary. Seneca did, however, acknowledge the importance of gaining enough wealth to live on. He stressed that it's important to continue learning while gaining this wealth and that nothing should ever prevent us from studying philosophy. This is the ideal path for those who are living today. It is important to strike a balance between the inevitably inconsequential pursuit of wealth and the important pursuit of philosophy. After all, we know that wealth isn't coming with us after death. The knowledge and wisdom has a chance of staying with us on our journey into the afterlife. Seneca said that you should be a philosopher today, 
whether you have material wealth or not. If you have material wealth without philosophy, how do you know if you have too much already? If you have nothing, then seek understanding first before anything else. When anticipating his friend Lucilius' thoughts on prioritizing wealth over the pursuit of philosophy, he said the following, But, you say, I shall lack the necessities of life. In the first place, you cannot lack them, because nature demands but little, and the wise man suits his needs to nature. Most of us live in a culture that is obsessed with status and material wealth. Look at how wasteful most of the high-end luxury items are. Check out this pathetic shirt that allows you to look like a basketball, but the lines are zippers. You can be a walking basketball for the low price of just $1,950. You can dress like a walking alligator for just $121,645. Do you like birds? Great! Now you can attract them by dressing as a bird's nest for the low cost of just $2,602. Is fashion not your thing? Well then have this $150 gold-plated slinky instead. Imagine how much could be done to solve the world's problems if people didn't waste money on such trash. Think about how much could be given to charity instead. Wealthy people are often overwhelmed with obligations and concerns. Politicians have to worry about scheming and manipulating as they grasp for power. And who knows when you will be backstabbed when it's politically convenient for another politician, as we saw over and over again in ancient Rome. Business owners have to worry about future success. Poor people have fewer concerns as they focus on obtaining the bare necessities. Eckhart Tolle points out that depressed poor people can always think, I will be happy when I have more money. But when rich people are depressed, it can be even more devastating because they can't have that delusion. The truth is, money is far less important than most people think. There are countless rich business owners and celebrities who have committed suicide. From an outsider's perspective, they appear to have perfect lives. It's tremendously sad. I am a giant Anthony Bourdain fan. He was able to travel the world meeting cool people and eating the best food on the planet, and it still wasn't enough in the end. One of the best EDM musicians of all time, Avicii, ended his life. Robin Williams did as well. Wisdom offers wealth in ready money and pays it over to those in whose eyes she has made wealth superfluous, meaning unnecessary, Seneca. That quote may be a bit hard to understand at first, so let me break it down. When you realize that wealth is not some superb fountain of happiness, and when you study philosophy and stoicism, you have a mental and emotional shift that provides true wealth, the wealth of peace of mind, the only wealth that truly matters in this universe. Seneca then goes on to cite Epicurus. The acquisition of riches has been for many men, not an end, but a change of troubles. And Seneca ends this letter with a paragraph that blew my mind. I will never forget this letter because it is the most powerful short text I have ever read. Here is that paragraph. I do not wonder, for the fault is not in the wealth, but in the mind itself. That which had made poverty a burden to us has made riches also a burden. Just as it matters little whether you lay a sick man on a wooden or on a golden bed, for whithersoever he be moved, he will carry his malady with him. So one need not care whether the diseased mind is bestowed upon riches or upon poverty. His malady goes with the man. Farewell. Seneca. The people of the world are clearly missing important knowledge. It is obvious because this knowledge isn't being taught in schools. What you are doing with your own consciousness is primary and all else is secondary. Watch your thoughts like a cat watching a mouse hole waiting for the prey to appear. When negative thoughts appear, you are under no obligation to believe them. Realize that most thoughts of the future never happen. The only answer is to be here now. Stop putting faith in money. Start putting faith in philosophy. I covered this in even more detail in my previous video called The Reduction of Suffering. The link will be at the end of this video. As far as what I prioritize in life based on what I have learned over the years, it goes in this order. Family, friends, and creation. Creation meaning these videos as well as this wild comedy show I'm creating in the summer. But 
It could be any kind of creation, from music to writing, whatever you're into. And remember the key lesson from Alexander Supertramp after wandering the wilderness alone for so long. Happiness is only real when shared. And I end as always, memento mori. Remember you shall die. Use that to push on and make the most of life. Peace out till next time. If you guys want to see more content like this for the future, be sure to share it with your friends. Subscribe, hit the like button, and whether you disagree with me or agree with me, I'd love to hear your comments. It also boosts my videos in the YouTube algorithm. Also, be sure to check out my other videos.